Hello. This archaeoscope is being made in the midst of a rather busy week for me. Um, uh, tomorrow, actually, I'll be filming down in Durham, uh, interviewing some archaeologists there. Uh, at the weekend, all weekend, I'm appearing at a, uh, at a local festival, and um, the day after that, I'll be rushing up uh, into the heart of Northumbria, um, to or Northumberland, I guess, to to film for uh, Linda Swan Gospels projects and potentially also the Bamborough Research Project, popping in there for a cup of tea. However, um, there's been something on my mind which uh, I wanted to, 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 to briefly discuss and bring to your attention. Uh, and it's been bothering me, or with me rather, since Monday when I posted the Archeo Scoop uh, about um, young people, specifically the, the uh, Revolution Youth uh, Union in Egypt, asking the army and other authorities to protect sites of archeological and historical interest during the protests which are actually ongoing. And despite the fact that the Egypt is in a time of, of revolution, um, and arguably this, this, is, this is another phase of that revolution, the people, uh, the young people, are very much concerned about their heritage. Um, there's been recently a, a number of Facebook groups started up um, uh, ex examining and highlighting problems of looting in Egypt. Uh, and I think this is very admirable. Um, and I can't help but wonder whether or not there's something that we, in the UK, in Europe, uh, potentially in other parts of the world as well, with, with a deep history, something in which we could be learning from the action of these, um, of these young people in Egypt. Now, it's a rather dramatic comparison, I know. Um, Egypt is undergoing revolution. But there is, I would say, a slow revolution occurring in our attitude, certainly in the UK, to heritage. Uh, a slow revolution in possibly a backwards direction. This has been highlighted uh, in recent months um, by changes in law, but also as well recently interviews which I did with, which I've been doing rather with archaeologists, who have highlighted their concerns that planning, for, especially planning laws, are, uh, are, are, are having a retrograde effect. Um, on the, the development of our relationship with our history in this country. Now, um, there's some examples would include, for example, as I say, change to planning. Um, this government, our, the coalition government currently in Britain, has been has described themselves as being unashamedly pro-growth. Uh, now, this means that, that they wanted, or, or certainly would like, ideally, to give um, a, a much freer um, set of rules for businesses, for uh, um, uh, economic, uh, economically active um, building projects um, to build where they think they need to build. And um, uh, one suspects, ideally, without any infringement fr um, from uh, heritage interests or even investigation into the heritage of an area. Now, um, thankfully, that hasn't quite happened yet. But it is bit by bit being chipped away at. Funding is being taken away from heritage interest groups. The English Heritage itself was recently uh, announced that it's going to become a charity rather than uh, directly linked with, um, for example, government funding. Um, and and also th there is this slow drip of change in the planning laws, which which is moving towards uh, building rather than um, investigation prior to building and, and preservation potentially if necessary. Um, the, ec the economy is driving these changes, and quite understandably. But one suspects that the, the phrase, unashamedly pro-growth, is nothing but a political um, um, uh, bait and switch, as it were. It, 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 it's something where you can say, oh yes, well, we're pro-growth by um, stopping spending on, or, or disencouraging, disincentivizing, I suppose, spending on heritage um, interests. Um, a pro-growth um, announcement would potentially be to say that, that a little bit of money will go into actually um, the, the development phase of building projects so that the heritage um, and uh, desk, desk space assessment phase, potentially even watching brief, maybe even excavation phase will be paid for maybe by the government and this will, this will encourage builders and developers to build on a certain site, not to look out elsewhere, not even, or rather even to potentially leave the country. So pro-growth is, I think, a misnomer here. It's a bit of a, uh, it's a, bit of a smoke and mirrors. It's, it's what it is, is it's unashamedly um, anti-hurdles um, um, for builders and that's a different thing entirely. You can be pro-growth and still have good process in, uh, in place. Um, there's the rise of recreational looting, um, high, very high profile metal, metal detecting fines across the country, which ironically have come to our attention because they've been um, announced 
via the Portable Antiquities Scheme. In other words, they've come through a good organisation. They will be, yes, sold, but they'll be hopefully sold to a museum. Uh, therefore, the museum gets to know where it was found, how it was found, gets to do further research on the find and the site, and the people who did the finding get some money from it. Everyone wins in that, in that instance. Um, uh, unfortunately, this has inspired many people to go out there and just recreationally uh, explore the countryside in the hope of finding their own coin hoard. And who knows how many um, aren't being re re reported in the in the correct way. I'm not saying that there are there are, that there are hundreds and thousands of them, but there are more probably, almost certainly. Um, vandalism. Um, the, 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 the instance of, va of historical vandalism has been rising slowly over the past few years. This is potentially linked with the lack of, um, of for example, youth, un uh, sorry, youth employment. Youth unemployment is an issue. It's potentially linked with um, uh, a lack of or re reduction in resources of um, heritage and historical trusts and groups to protect their properties and their sites. Um, but also, I would say it's linked with um, education. It's linked with a, a lack of education as to what it is that is over in that particular field, or what that castle is, or um, so people just see a derelict site that they can go and drink a lot in, uh, and paint on the walls, and just generally well have fun. You know, and to those to the to, in that moment to those people, they are having fun. But there is a there is a, a trend towards a rise in, in heritage vandalism, and a trend towards a reduction in heritage funding to combat said vandalism. Uh, it's also theft from museums. Um, a very high profile instance in the last couple of years was the Oriental Museum in Durham University, where uh, um, a, um, a lovely um, uh, artifact from China was stolen from a museum to order for a Chinese, uh, it is thought, I think, a business consortium or businessman. And um, these guys, they burrow through a wall, grabbed the object, and, and scarfed it. They were caught, they went to prison. But uh, there is a rise in these things. Um, again, one suspects uh, the, ero the erosion of, of, um, of funding uh, in terms of the protection and security of, of sites, the erosion in, uh, of, of legal um, um, delineation between uh, public property, private property, museum property, uh, so on and so forth, and also the perceived rise in the power of the individual and their, their ability to buy what they have, whatever they want. It kind of feels a little bit like the 1980s, you know, the richer are getting richer, or the rich rather are getting richer. And, uh, you know, I want that. I will order it. I will send out some people to go and get it. These are all sort of interlinked. Uh, these economic, political and social uh, factors are all kind of snowballing, I would say, slowly in Britain uh, and, and also in other parts of, of uh, um, <clears throat> of uh, Europe and uh, across the Middle East, across <laughs> the Far East, so on and so forth. So they're all they're real concerns and changes and they are slowly occurring. Now um, this also was brought into sharp focus for me by a conversation that I had with a guy called Rhys in Australia. Um, he doesn't pronounce his name Rhys but it is pronounced, uh, no it is spelled Rhys the Welsh way um, and he is uh, quite proud to have a Welsh name so good on him. Anyway I was talking to this guy and um, we were talking about bottles in Australia and how actually bottles in the Victorian era are very well protected uh, in law. Now hopefully he's actually going to be doing a video for you on this topic and uh, why it's important and how um, archaeology in countries like Australia, potentially also the US, have a different focus and a different attitude to archaeology in countries like the UK because um, of the, the, the relationship between the data and their immediate history. But anyway, he'll he'll cover that hopefully. But he highlighted the fact that in Australia there there are uh, there's a, there's, a, there's an attempt to, for example, sieve a hundred percent of spoil from an archaeological dig. In other words, you don't just take a sample as you usually do in the UK. You try and and sieve everything. Now, yes, in the UK that's not. Uh, probably not feasible because we have um, a, a huge wealth of, of history usually on a site to, to sieve through. Often you'll have to dig down several meters to get to, to, to the natural soil, the pre-human habitation layer. But, uh, but he highlighted, um, certainly, and for me it was linked with this issue in my mind at least, the fact that there is um, uh, a, um, 
a legal precedent for valuing every every nanometer of the excavation, every every um, uh, every nanogram, if that's the unit of measurement, which comes out of the ground, has to be saved and checked. And it's laborious, and it's time-consuming, and it's it's boring. But it is done because it is important and it's protected by law. Maybe there's something for us to learn here in the UK with regards to that. Again, I'm not suggesting we save every site that would every sorry every nanogram, if that's a unit of measurement, site uh, of every site rather in the UK. But it's something to consider. Um, now, obviously, I'm preaching to the choir. <laughs> I really am preaching to the choir in this instance. You're only watching this video, or you're only subscribed to my YouTube channel, or you're only on my Facebook page, or Archaeosuit's Facebook page, because you're interested in archaeology and history things um, type stuff. But, uh, but I thought it was a worthwhile question to ask whether or not, um, given the similar circumstances, actually given the slow burn of change I would say backwards, maybe backwards by 20 years in this country, bit by bit. Uh, pay standards are eroding, funding is eroding, legal protection is eroding, um, the attitudes towards the hit towards heritage is eroding, education about heritage is unfortunately um, eroding, although that's something that I try to combat. Given those circumstances, if there was a similar sequence of events in Britain or in other countries, would the youth um, actively rise up with youth organisations actually want to protect our heritage and our history and, and want to make sure that it was protected by the authorities. In fact, putting out an international press release to that effect. I have to say at the moment I'm not sure what the answer to that question is. Um, and I'm also not entirely sure how we can best go about combating all these various interests, governmental um, interests, uh, local legislative interests, um, international um, interests in terms of uh, potentially looting sites, um, the casual looting, the relationship between the public and their immediate area in terms of its heritage and how it affects them directly or indirectly highlighting the importance of history for the public rather than it just being an abstract concept which has no bearing on modern life. How we go about tackling all of those issues I, I'm not, I certainly don't pretend to have the answer but I think it's worthwhile considering and I think the, the Egypt example has really highlighted that uh, the young people can and do take an interest in the past. It's, it's, a, it's a false premise to argue otherwise. Anyway I thought I'd open this up to your uh, comments. <clears throat> if you have any thoughts, please do comment below because I, 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 I know my thoughts are still crystallising on this issue. So I'm going to go away and have a glass of water because I'm losing my voice. Um, and uh, just have a think about that. And please do comment below. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye.